Does your child need to brush up on his communication skills, time management skills, or uh, teamwork abilities? Are you wondering how to help your child develop these important soft skills? Maybe you're hesitant to push your child to do hard things, although we know and we hear that that's so important for our kids. You're gonna enjoy today's conversation. I'm gonna be talking with a guest about amazing things youth can do, developing your child's soft skills. You're confident, no doubt, in your child's knowledge, but what about his soft skills? You see that he's doing well in his academics, but there's much more needed to be successful in business and in life beyond school. How do we encourage growth in communication, responsibility, flexibility? My guest today is confident that our children benefit from doing hard things. He says that we need to push them beyond their com comfort zone. And often that's beyond our comfort zone also as their parents. My name is Diana Rolston. I wanna welcome you to Spark Homeschool Parent. Spark Homeschool Parent is an encouraging, non-judgmental community where we can openly share our questions, our doubts, our fears about homeschooling. So I wanna welcome you and I wanna welcome you to today's conversation. This conversation is for you. If you think that your child needs to gain some of those valuable soft skills, but you're at a loss of how to do it. I wanna thank you for joining. I see that we have a couple um, live viewers. I'd love it if you could just let me know where you're watching from as our community grows. It's just uh, exciting for me to see where everybody's tuning in from. And I have my guest here with me. So as you're watching, send in a question and we'll try to get to those. And this is, uh, you know, no doubt, other families who would benefit from these conversations and these Facebook Lives. So I encourage you to please share this with a friend. We are in focusing on that strengths pillar. That is the S in Spark. So this month, we're talking about different aspects of um, di uh, discovering, developing, encouraging our children in their strengths. And that leads me to our conversation today, which is amazing things youth can do, developing your soft, their soft skills, your child's soft skills. I wanna thank you uh, for joining us, Sherry. I see you're in the Ottawa area there. Um, and yeah, send in your questions if anything comes to mind. I do have a guest today, and I have the privilege of introducing you to him and our conversation. My guest today is a commerce graduate uh, of Dalhousie University, that's in the on the east coast of Canada. He started his career as a bookkeeper in a small company, but he quickly realized that that's not where his passions lie. And you'll hear a little bit more about his story. He soon moved into a role of financial coach, which he's still involved with today. He spent a significant amount of time tutoring university students, teaching homeschool courses that focused on personal finance, accounting, public speaking. And he currently lives with his beautiful wife of 11 years in Divert, uh, Nova Scotia. I wanna welcome my guest, Jason Lindsay. Hi there, Jason, thanks for joining me. Well, thanks so much for having me. I really appreciate it, Diana. I'm looking forward to this conversation. Yeah, thank you. And before we get started, I want to just um, uh, share some, like what we're talking about when we're talking about soft skills um, and the importance of them. We're talking about communication, talking about teamwork, problem solving, decision making, organizational skills. There's like a whole list of them, but also um, time management, organizing our things, leadership. Those are a lot of skills that children and youth don't develop while they're um, at school or at in the homeschool environment. I did a quick uh, poll. I'm not sure if you got to see that, Jason. The question was, what soft skills does your child need to, to further develop? So if there's anyone watching out there who didn't get a chance to weigh in, 
let me know what soft skills does your child need to further develop? The number one was teamwork, probably not surprising to you. Number two was time management. And the third one was communication. All uh, pretty tight. Absolutely, yeah. So, and those are some of the um, skills that you're going to be discussing with us today. And you are convinced that of the abilities of our youth, which is awesome. And you really, um, there's an importance to you of encouraging our children to do scary things. So what types of, what are you thinking of when you say scary things? And how does this benefit our children? Oh, wonderful, wonderful question. See, it, it is my belief, if I could just back up a moment here, it is yeah. my belief that people can do things that they don't believe they can do. I, I think mm -hmm. many of us can be better at just about everything that we do. We may not ever become an expert in anything or a real, you know, top-notch professional. Sometimes we may not be gifted with those skills, but I do believe that we can all be better at the things that we do. And, and so when I think of things that younger people um, can be doing or should be doing, I, um, you know, I came to this realization when I thought of my own childhood. I grew up um, going to public school. I, I wasn't uh, a homeschool child for sure. And, and so I was probably not unlike a lot of other kids that were my age and in, 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 my, um, in my area where I lived um, in that, you know, I, I sort of followed the school system and did everything I was supposed to do. I did very well in school. And it wasn't until I got into my 20s and I got out in the workforce that I kind of realized, wow, there is so much more I could do and I wish I had done it earlier. And, and so um, one of the things that was personally very scary to me was standing up in front of a group and giving a presentation or a talk or even something like what I'm doing at this very moment. I think and, a lot of us can relate to that. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, you know, we, we've probably heard it said that, uh, you know, the biggest fear that people have is death and uh and, you know, the second biggest fear is, uh, you know, public speaking and, um, you know, but a lot of people, when it comes down to it, actually fear dying while public speaking. <laughs> um, and, and so I, what, what I think is, you know, if you've never, if you've gone through your whole life without standing in front of a group, giving a speech, you're going to be scared whether you're 40 or 50 or 60. So why not do it when you're younger and just get it over with? And it'll probably be a lot easier. That's such a great point. Yeah. And, and so uh, public speaking is a huge thing. And but communication, you brought up a really good point earlier, Diana, when you mentioned communication, because I think communication comes under the umbrella of public speaking. But communication can be a lot more, even something as simple as calling up a, you know, a business to ask about a particular product that you might be interested in. And what I often see a lot of. Um, young people do. And if they're interested in buying something, they have mom or dad call the store to inquire about that particular product. And I think that's something that kids should be doing and can do. That's uh, when my children were young, I asked them to order the pizza by phone, not by uh, doing it online. That was really <laughs> tough, though. A absolutely, absolutely. And, and, it, and it's funny, because you know, that, that might be something that a lot of parents just sort of, you know, they're, they're comfortable doing that themselves. They don't realize the fear that goes along with that. And so mm -hmm. they don't, they don't see it as an important thing for their, their son or daughter to do, but I, but that, that's a, that's amazing. Mm -hmm. um, and, and did, did your children, um, did they, did they fight back a little bit at first? Oh yeah. 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 <laughs> Even at 21 they're uh, it, public speaking is not a gift of theirs and it is something um, that's a couple of them still shy away from, but mm -hmm. I didn't, I didn't meet you or hear your thoughts while my children were young, but, um, I, I really resonate with this and really, um, encourage my children as homeschoolers. We have so much opportunity to do contests and activities within the community. And mm -hmm. that's um, where I really saw them blossoming. There was one uh, opportunity that it was a pretty high level robotics competition 
um, in another city and there was a, it was extremely competitive. And one of my sons said that after that, he is not, does not get nervous in stressful situations. That situation, that one situation just put him over the top and he remained calm when he needed to. And from that moment on, stress management is not an issue for him. But that's um, a great example. That, <laughs> that's amazing. That's amazing. I love hearing stories like that. And, uh, um, you know, when I, when I speak of my own personal experiences, I mean, I, you know, I, I went through public school, as I mentioned earlier, and, you know, they usually make you get up in front of the class and give talks. And I even did a little bit of that in university. And I was scared to death. I'd be up there turning bright red. My knees would be knocking. Maybe some of you out there can relate, right? We've all been there. And um, if I could just share one of my own personal stories yeah. after I got out of school, uh, as you brought up earlier when you introduced me, um, I went to work as a bookkeeper for a time and I, I didn't enjoy my job and I was you know, getting paid 11 bucks an hour, which wasn't even much 20 years ago. But uh, so I, I, le I left that work and I went to work uh, for a financial firm. And, uh, you know, I love numbers. I'm kind of a numbers guy, accounting and finance are my backgrounds. But I remember we used to run meetings during the week where we'd invite potential clients and we'd have other people from the office there. And it was just a way of kind of showcasing our company and reaching out to the, the community with the things that we do. In my very first meeting, uh, the, the branch manager at my office came up to me and he said, OK, Jason, um, I want you to present this particular financial concept tonight. And I was brand new in the business. I understood the concept. But I'd, I'd never I'd never taught it in front of a group and I was scared to death. And at first I didn't mm -hmm. want to. And he said, no, no, you're going to do this and you're going to do great. He encouraged me. And um, I got up there and I was nervous and I didn't do a great job. But what happened was I got a little bit comfortable with it. And he actually gave me um, a script to kind of practice and uh, sort of a presentation that I could go through. And I went back home. He said, you're doing it again next week, by the way. And I went back home and I practiced. 30, 40, 50 times on my wall. Mm -hmm. I had like a board on my wall. I practiced going through it. I memorized it word for word. It was like three pages long. Went back the next week and did it. It got a little bit better. And I did it again and it got a little bit better. And it kept getting better. And I kept doing it every single week and I kept becoming more comfortable with it. And then he had me presenting other topics. And then, but, and then it wasn't too long before I was running the entire meeting. And so it was then that I realized that People can do more than they think they can. Mm. I never thought I could, but I'm now doing it. And um, and those experiences have really led the way to me being able to, you know, run homeschool courses for folks across Canada, uh, teach at a college, which I now do, um, work with clients on the financial side of things, tutor university students. All all the things that I do today have come from those experiences. Which just a short time ago, you probably <laughs> would not have imagined that you'd be where you are now. No, I, I, re I really wouldn't. I really wouldn't. And so, you know, those things are a little bit painful at the time, but we've got to go through them. And if there's nobody pushing us and encouraging us and really letting us know the importance of that, then we're probably not going to do it if it's left up to us. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Maybe you have some advice for our young people. Most of the people listening will be the parents, but maybe at this mm -hmm. point, um, some of the parents there can have their <laughs> their youth, their young, their I was going to say young children, but not their youth. Take mm -hmm. a listen because you're going to give us some advice to for young people to just push themselves into that zone where they're not so comfortable. Absolutely. And so I do have some advice for some parents, and it may not be exactly what you're going to expect if you're listening at home today, um, because you're probably expecting me to give you a lot of tips and tricks on how you can encourage your children to do stuff. And for sure, that stuff is important and for sure that you should be doing that. Um, but my advice to you would be to first set the example. See, it's been my experiences that kids go through life not doing those scary things and then they get to be adults and then they have kids of their own. And now, if you as an adult have never done those scary things, how can you ask your son or daughter to do those scary things? And I've talked to a lot of adults. I, I'm in the people business and I enjoy talking to people and finding out what makes them tick. And so one of the things that I'll often hear from people is, regrets that they might have had in their life. They might say, oh, I wish I'd started that business 
when I was younger. I, I wish I'd pursued this avenue or I wish I had done this. But then they say something that's not true. They say, now it's too late. It's too late for me. But now I'm going to I'm going to push my kids to do that so they don't wind up in the same boat as me. Well, no. First of all, it's never too late. You're making an excuse for yourself. You can go back and do all those things. And I would encourage you to go do those things and um, set the example for your children. That's the best way. Mm. Because it, 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 it's like if you were a smoker and you're trying to tell your kids not to smoke. Well, that's mm -hmm. not really going to work because, because they're seeing you smoke. And so I think it's really important to do it that way. That's great. Uh, one of the quotes that I um, posted just recently was Eleanor Roosevelt that said, I can't remember exactly, but do something scary every day. Absolutely. <laughs> so that would be a great example. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And, um, and I have so much respect for people that do. I really do. Um, I can remember uh, my niece was telling me a story. My niece is in her 20s now, but she was she, and she was homeschooled. And, and she was telling me a story about how she went to um, some kind of, a, a, I think it was piano or singing rehearsal, some musical thing that she was involved in. And and it would have been one of those things where the other people in her class were there and maybe some parents, not not necessarily a huge group, but it was like a year-end rehearsal. And, um, and I think she got up to sing and then, at one point she forgot her words and it just, it, it, it didn't go so well. And she was a little bit embarrassed, I think, but I remember hearing that story and um, you know, I, I hear things like that. And I, and, and my reaction to that is, wow, like you're awesome. You got up in front of the group and you did something that you were scared to do. That's what I focus on. That's, that's, what's, that's all I hear when I hear stories like that. That's, I think that is the way to encourage them too, our kids, eh? Mm -hmm. like that's, uh, congratulations for stepping out of your comfort zone. Yeah, because the, the, the thing is, every, everybody is scared uh, of something at some point. I mean, you know, when, when you have a five-year-old who gets their first bike, you know, they're maybe scared to hop on the bike or they're scared to get in the pool. Uh, they're scared to, you know call up uh, maybe a young lady when they're, that, that they might be interested in when they're, yeah. you know, of court in age or however you do it in your family. Um, they may be a little bit nervous to do that, but, um, but we all get over those things. And that really applies to everything. The, the misconception mm -hmm. out there is that I don't have that skill. I'm not made to do this. That's not what I'm meant to be doing. Well, I don't think that's true in most cases. I mean, it's not necessarily something you have to do as a career. If we're talking about, say, public speaking, you don't necessarily mm -hmm. need to be a professional speaker. Um, but you can be better than you are right now. And that's the point I really want to make sure people understand. Mm -hmm. And that's what you mean when you say that uh, youth can do amazing things. Youth can do amazing things. Um, um, when I started my homeschool business a, a few years ago, one of the courses I decided to start was um, sort of a combination course. It was made up of, it had a, an accounting portion, which was my background. And it also had a business portion where students would ba learn basic accounting skills, but they'd also learn to start their own business. So it was kind of an entrepreneurship course. And they actually had to run the business and they had to go out and, mm -hmm. you know, um, market to customers and, and make money. And I remember I had a couple of boys who were... Um, uh, based out of Ontario, a couple of twin boys actually, and uh, they started up a, a partnership together, and um, and uh, they were in the firewood business. So they would cut down the cut down the trees and get the firewood ready and 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 sell it. And they they built up a nice little customer base. But just in the the few months that we ran the course, they actually made about three thousand dollars being in business for themselves. And there's so many different ways to make money out there, and uh, I think. I think it's really important to, you know, do, do things like that, get into your comfort zone. You learn so many great skills in the process. Mm -hmm. That's something that's really encouraged in our family too. My, both my husband and I have our own businesses and our it's sort of family conversation. We talk about uh, entrepreneurism quite a bit mm -hmm. and uh, each one of my children have had their own business. But that's like really, they're so motivated to talk to strangers when they know the benefits of uh, making a few more dollars. 
it was yes. such a great thing for me to witness as a mom of very shy children. Um, and different opportunities that our kids have um, with different fairs. I know in our area, every year we have a history fair and part of that fair is doing your research and presenting it on a board, but part of that is presenting, like doing a little presentation to the judges, mm -hmm. which is terrifying for some children. But yeah, it's like that first step. Next time it won't be so hard. Won't yes. be, and so much is learned. It, yeah, it, that, that, that's what that's wonderful that you have uh, you have children that have gone through that, and uh, I think that's one of the beauties of homeschooling too is that you can kind of customize, you know, a curriculum that that includes all those things that they might not get in school. I mean, from time to time, public schools might have things like that, but um, yeah. but you can really work to. Um, you know, your children's strengths and, uh, and weaknesses and, and really be able to work on those. So that's, um, that's amazing. Mm -hmm. are, are your children still involved in business? Uh, they are. Um, yeah, <laughs> they want, uh, particularly one of my boys and he is, uh, some of the listeners will know he is the mechanic, the one that puts things together. Um, his latest endeavors, when he, he's also a deal finder. So he imports um, chainsaw pieces and then puts together the chainsaw and then sells it at um, a good profit for him or picks up still. I tell stories about when he was like 10 and picking up old lawnmowers from neighbors, but he still cannot uh, drive by without picking up something and uh, putting them together and but the people that he meets it's been amazing um and he just he thrives in that <laughs> sherry says so smart yes <laughs> and um my eldest extremely shy child um but once and then he really grew to love the water he's uh, does quite a bit of white water paddling especially on the ottawa river and once he got into that group of like-minded people, he just blossomed. And he now can talk to anybody. But I think if we like just encourage, like I always say, encourage our children in their strengths to watch our children talk to other people with the same interests, that's sort of a safe place for them, talking to an adult or a small group of people. And then it just grows and expands. And like you say, practice the next time it gets easier and then the next yes. time they could actually like step out and and start the conversation with a stranger uh, absolutely absolutely mm -hmm. and um yeah that and, that and that is why communication is so important because the, the way i see it whether, whether you want to go in into business later in life or whether you want to work for someone else you still have to be a good communicator because even if you're going to get a job you've got to go sit down and meet with somebody for an interview um you're going to have to mm. interact with your you know your subordinates or uh, your managers or your um your colleagues and customers and all those different things communication is um, um mm -hmm. such a great thing uh, when i look back at my own life um i didn't uh you know i didn't work well i, I had a paper route when i was younger which is which is good which is good, but in some ways, I kind of wish I'd worked in, in maybe some kind of retail or fast food joint because yeah. I would have had more interaction with customers. Um, you know, I would deliver the papers, of course, and, and they'd pay me, but I didn't talk to them too much. And I feel those would have been some valuable skills to learn. Yeah. But, but at the same time, I don't want to have any regrets because I realized the things that I did have to go through led me to where I am today and things might have been different. Mm -hmm. But that retail is a great example because it's almost like a scripted environment where mm -hmm. any child can just step in and very normal um, conversations you'd have with people, but it would, it's almost repetitive, the same conversation mm -hmm. with people. So yes. it like builds that confidence. That's yeah. right. That's a great That's example. Right. And, and once and I, you build that confidence, you can you can go in other directions and take different routes and go into different things. Yeah, yeah. 
I really enjoyed this conversation. Thank you so much, Jason. Oh, and you're welcome. Thank, thank you so much for having me. Yeah. Um, I want to encourage, um, if anybody's listening to the replay, continue this conversation. If you have any questions for Jason, um, you had mentioned, Jason, that you enjoy conversations like this, that you'd love to connect. How can people uh, continue this conversation and connect with you? Well, I feel free to look me up on Facebook if you want. You can send me a uh, you know, a friend invitation if you'd like. Um, but you can also email me. My email is jasonlindsay22 at hotmail.com. And I don't know if I can type, I can probably type that in the chat or maybe I can't. Am I able to make a comment here? Uh, let me do that. Okay. jasonlindsay22 at hotmail.com. Thank you. Sorry, I'm a little slow here. That's okay. Here we go. I think I got it out there. Awesome. Maybe not. It's thinking. Yep. There it goes. Yep. That, that, it's, it's, it's good. That, that's my email. So anyone okay. can reach out. I'd love to have a conversation with anyone and anything I can do to help. I'd be happy to. Yeah. We really appreciate that. Thank you. So just to close out, uh, this is Spark Homeschool Parent. And these Facebook lives are just part of the conversation that we have together with other homeschool parents. If you would like to be part of these conversations throughout the week, please join us at Spark Homeschool Parent on Facebook. And I'm here every Friday at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And so look forward to uh, seeing you, hearing from you again. And remember, until next time, as a Spark Homeschool Parent, you can discover the spark that ignites your child's learning. Thanks again, Jason. Thank you very much. And uh, I, I thank you for everyone who tuned in today. Thanks. We'll talk to you again. Okay. Take care.